May you find happiness and peace. And may your home stand the test of time. Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Mary. Today I'll be reacting to what are we doing to white people? <laughs> wow. Anyway, without further ado, let's get started. Let's talk about what we're doing to white people. There's been something going on for a while now that we're being told not to notice. More to the point that we're asking white people not only to ignore, but to accept the rising tide of racial hatred against white people. In the past decade, there has been a noticeable cultural shift in what constitutes acceptable speech as it relates to white people. Back when I was a kid in the early 2000s, the mainstream American culture preached about respecting each other's differences and not seeing color. Nowadays, we say that not seeing color is racism, that you must see color. But the more I see how things are unfolding, the more I'm convinced that this is wrong. Back then, saying something off-handed about white people were seen as not appropriate, just as it would be to say something off-handed about people of any other race. But that soon gave way to our current times, in which there exists virtually no limit to what racial minorities can and do say about white people. I believe this is the natural outgrowth of a perverse ideology that teaches us that everything, every societal ill, is the fault of white people, and that whatever prejudice acts we may inflict upon them does not constitute discrimination because we don't have the power to discriminate. And alarmingly, this is particularly pronounced in the younger generation. But is it true? Do we not have the power to discriminate? Well, let's see. First, let's take a look at the racial hatred at the interpersonal level. In today's society, it has become somewhat fashionable to think things and say things about and to white people that would not be acceptable if it was said about any other race. And we're being taught that this double standard is not wrong, that it is rather a form of empowerment. They'll attribute negative experiences that they've had with white people to their whiteness. You had an argument in line at the grocery store wow. with a white person? They were acting entitled because they were white. A white driver cut you off when you were driving? They need to check their white privilege. Your actions, your conduct, and your existence, in other words, boil down to your whiteness. And ashamedly, at one point in time, this was how I used to think as well. And beyond the people in my circle, I noticed that many people of color have this sort of blase attitude, an attitude most particularly pronounced when there are no other white people around. Things are being said not just behind closed doors, but out in the open. Not just between close friends, but between complete strangers. So here's the thing. This is something that I've experienced countless times, so I know that there are other people who are experiencing it too. I know it must resonate with at least some of you. The difficulty here is that no matter how many anecdotes I share, they are just that, anecdotes. And people who refuse to believe that this is happening will just chalk it up to my experience as being a fluke. Or worse yet, they'll say I'm lying. So I've compiled some TikTok videos. I want you to take a look at the things that are being said about white people, especially by the younger generation, the kind of statements people wouldn't dare say about people of any other race. Take a look at what is stunningly in vogue in today's society and ask yourselves, where does this lead to years down the line? You have a token white and you're hanging out with your friend group of color. You need to ask permission from everybody in the group to bring your white friend. Like don't just bring wow. them. I might not be in the mood to deal with white shenanigans that day. That's that's all I'm saying. And another thing, it feeds into their ego. Like don't don't let them think they're a good white person. Accomplices ask, how can they support black and indigenous people of color? And sometimes I really don't know what to say, but here's one easy way. Just don't have babies. Women can single handedly cause the white genocide that they are so afraid of. With two point two five billion Asian women and half a billion white men. Baby, it'll only take two generations. In two generations, there will no longer be any blonde haired. These are some things I noticed about white American wow. culture. Being grounded is a punishment to them. That's what they call punishment. Mm. The least grounded, least balanced, most destructive race considers being grounded a punishment. Yeah. They also say really violent phrases. Like they say things like, Kill two birds with one stone. Why do we have to kill the birds? Why is everything so violent? It's almost like one's language and phrases reflects one's nature. Mm. So that you guys, this is too too much. You know, this is is definitely too much because I I've been in Africa basically all my life and we don't see whites in this way. You see. We actually adore them whenever we see them around, you see. You can be a foreigner in a new land. Let's say I'm a Nigerian, I'm based in Ghana, 
but the way a Ghanaian will treat me is way different from the way he would treat a white person you see so they show them more respect they show them more more yeah a whole lot of respect so when i see this coming like how they treat white person is different or bad i feel like no like everyone is being they really treat them well you see and aside from being a white person i'm talking about any other foreigner so long as you are not black you see so long as you even if you are from asia or any other continent so long as you are not black we show you more and more respect than a black man you know that is why this saying came that a, a pastor or a prophet is not respected in his home so long as you have the same quality with a similar black person you are not seen as um let's say an important person or a vital person but when another person come with a different kind of skin different kind of accents they show that person more respect so i i don't really experience you know this treatment or we don't really show them this treatment but anyway let's just continue and see how this video unfold guys uh jeffrey Dahmer movie on netflix is the perfect example of the sensationalization of white violence people have a much easier time sympathizing with white criminals than they do with black victims People think these shows are harmless, but they actually contribute to a much bigger issue. It contributes to the viewpoint that white people are less violent than everyone else, and white violence is something to be consumed in media, and that's it. What is with Caucasian people and, like, their inability to, like, read a fucking room? Like y'all act like you don't understand shit because y'all be the first ones during a conversation about the holocaust to get so mad when black people be like you do realize that the original jewish people were black right white people do not need to explain to anybody about us all bleeding red because baby you all are the people that need to learn that lesson clearly history shows that you all are the people that like to pillage and eradicate enslave and oppress attempt to suppress greatness because you all simply don't have it right here go y'all come goblins who don't even live in the fucking city which by the way the q-tip people are the last ones to ever talk about somebody stealing anything y'all wouldn't be in this country had it not been for y'all stealing it but well, y'all are more focused on people looting and trying to get necessities and things that they need. And yes, a TV is a fucking necessity. Thank you, Buffy. You feel like you're better than because people are out here stealing and ugh, you would never. First of all, if you are a male monster, that is how your ancestors got everything from stealing. People are and that's a behavior that's very common among white women. You may have not intended that, wow. but there are many white women who act exactly like you. If you can find it in your heart this holiday season <laughs> to donate to the discriminated white fund, you'd be helping millions. Nothing says high protein like cicadas and cheese. Make sure you... F and nothing says caucasity like that right there. What caucasity looks like. Roaming Asian grocery stores like it's an amusement park. Explain to me why white people don't wear shoes outdoor, but wear shoes inside. <laughs> <laughs> both white women we are inherently a danger in spaces for black indigenous and other people of color simply by existing it's white cis men who are part of the far right wing ideology of fascism that is a true threat and the terrorism to this country if BIPOC stand in the street and scream at the top of their lungs I hate all white people I want all white people to go die die white devil you cracker bitch um, that's still not racism. You're not one of the good white people. Other, stop separating us from the bad white people. Don't sit out there in comments and say, we don't claim them. We are that. We are the ones shooting up schools. We are the ones raping people, the ones enslaving people. We're and I'll say it, I hate being white. You know, which means I'm one of the good ones. All white people are inherently racist. Yeah. Can you be racist against white people? Based off of the definition of racism, yes, but it's not gonna hurt them and hurt their opportunities like it does people of color. While technically you can, it's not like an issue. You can right? oppress the oppressor. If it helps you sleep at night, I'm racist to white people. I'm proud of it. Why do people not understand that you can't be racist?
to white people. It's it's impossible. The system is not set up that way. You can insult white people, but it is not racism. Me calling a white person to tell them mayonnaise and a, like a flower looking ass, it's not, that's not racism. You went all the way to Africa to physically take black people from their homes, shoved them in on boats where a lot of them got diseases and died, told them where they could sit on a bus, told them which schools they could go to, which water fountains they could use, which bathrooms they could use, and that's sugarcoating it. Those are just turns. I'm not even describing all the disgusting things that happened. And they don't even want revenge? They are letting you guys skate by asking for equal rights? That's it? And you're still saying no? They are not as angry as they should be. Y'all are getting off easy and you're still saying no? Fuck you. Some people look at that and chalk it up to the grumblings of the powerless. That's the idea that when you have a power disparity, the less powerful sort of has this general society given leeway to complain about the more powerful. The villagers complaining about their king doesn't have the same ring as the king making side and crude comments about the villagers. But that's not what's going on here. Because although certain segments of our society refuse to believe this, even as evidence mount before our very eyes, in one side of the political aisle, people of color actually have greater power than white people. That is the truth that is not being acknowledged by the people that need to hear it because this gets in the way of them wielding that power in the way they want, malignantly. I've heard from somewhere that politics is downstream of culture and I think that is certainly correct. We have a mainstream culture that tells us it's okay to hold prejudiced and hateful view of white people and our politics is then infused with this energy and we see active overt and on the books racial discrimination of white people that those who are perpetuating this hatred is refusing to see as discrimination. They'll say, no, 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 this is remediation. These are the same people who are making tenuous arguments that some of our race neutral laws discriminate against people of color. And this is certainly evidence that in one side of the political aisle, people of color have more power than white people. Because if we didn't have the power, we wouldn't be able to put into place practices and policies that does this. That's what power is. Things like Minneapolis local government agreeing to a contract with the teachers union that says white teachers must be fired first. New York City's government enacting a policy of having white seniors go to the back of the line on life-saving COVID treatment. A college professor that says white people should be killed and facing no repercussions. Cornell University banning white people from rock climbing lessons. One of many, many, many instances of liberal colleges doing the utmost to exclude and ostracize white students. BIPOC only events equal no whites, but they don't have the guts to say that, even though that is what that is. That's what makes this different than the murk rumblings of the common villager. The villagers have surrounded the palace, demanding Mary and Tomlin's head. The power dynamics have shifted. That is a fact. Progressive media outlets do not cover these stories. Some people out there have no idea that this is going on. But worse, some others out there know but agree with what's going on. And for those people to convince themselves that this is not racial discrimination, they play mind tricks and word games. They use phrases. Guys, I, I agree with what he's saying because <laughs> this is really becoming so, so bad. Even more than what I, I, I thought at first, you know. There is a saying that when a father sin, you see, the sin will go down, you know, to his generations. And that is what I'm seeing now. In my village, they said when you stain your hand with oil, it will mess with the remaining finger. Even if it's one finger, it will surely touch the remaining finger. So I think what the white folks are, you know, passing through now is part of past experience, part of what I don't think they did, you know, because according to... Um, the, the castle here in Ghana, they were built almost 500 years ago. And, you know, they were not alive like back then. It was the sin of their fathers. Even if, yeah, it's no good to sell a fellow human being or enslave your fellow human being. But the thing is, it has happened. And majority of the reason why they try to tolerate what we do to them and feel it's not racism is because deep down they know that what their fathers or their forefathers did were wrong. So I get your point, but my only issue is I don't think we should keep on painting them bad because this uh, this is something that happened way back. It is not like it's happening currently, you see. And sincerely speaking, if we had the privilege, like let's say a black force or a black nation or other continent, you have the privilege of going to a continent that are not really developed. You try to develop that continent. And aside from that, you take something for yourself, which is your reward. It's like... They came to Africa, they developed Africa to 
what they needed at that particular time which majority of those houses built back then are still in use up to today majority of those road built back then for africans they are still use in use up to today yeah i'm saying facts because i have seen it for myself even if i know they exploited you know they took a whole lot from us but they actually contributed to the development of africa and africans you see and well i really appreciate them for that because I, I, I thank God we are no longer oppressed or we are no longer colonized because now we have the opportunity to make decisions. But I'm asking all Africans out there, as an African, you've been given that power. What have you done with it? Because what I see is totally different from, you know, back then at least, you know, you don't have the power to make decisions. But now you have the power and still things are still, African is still not one of the most, you know, developed continents in the world. I know we will get it eventually, but I think the white force is in our problem because majority of us have had independence for over 60 years and I, I don't even see what we are even doing with our independence and this i i love the fact that a lot of people are saying their mind they are saying based on what they've had and the experience they've had and i'm not saying this to side with white folks because i've seen people out there you know especially people from countries like ukraine and other con um, countries like black folks that have gone there how they have been treated, you know, by racists. Like they actually treat them because of the color of their skin. And I, I see how, you know, they come back, how they, they, they lament about such treatment. They feel like they, they don't have opportunity to express themselves. It's like some people don't want to just stay with them because of the color of their skin. I, I get it. I get it. You know, even in your own fellow African country, not every what is it called? Should I say? local government or every not, not even of not every country like you you see even if we are both africans some countries might not even want you around you see and even if you you eventually get to some certain countries the people around there once they hear where you are from they don't want to associate with you so it's the same thing all over the world it's not really based on the color of your skin me i just love the way you know how quiet the white folks are is they said you can't call like insult the white force or call them racist and they will pick blame it's like they accept it well to me i feel the reason why they're accepting it is because they they know their faults they know what they've done to you know other continents they know the the pain that they've inflicted on them so they try to understand they try to just take the blame and you see no matter how you treat them when your country is in need and you cry to them you see they always show up to help even if at the end of the day they pick something in return but they are always there to help and talking points like punching up you can't be racist to white people you can't oppress the oppressor meaning i'm acting oppressively but i've designated you as the oppressor so everything goes or amorex candy's infamous words the only way to remedy past discrimination is current discrimination or when people say things like what we're doing to white people is not racism because racism is prejudice plus power and we don't have the power. <laughs> they use all this mind-bending apparatus to delude themselves into believing what they're doing faces no moral quandary. But in the back of their minds, perhaps in their subconscious minds, is racial revenge. We experienced it. You experienced it too. See how you like it. That people of color are using our newfound power to act this way and then pretend like none of this is going on leads me to believe that we would have done the same thing that white people did were we to be in their historical yeah. position. Because such acts have its roots in human nature, not white people nature. And one can only imagine what might happen in the coming decades when the demographics of the US will have shifted such that white people will no longer constitute the majority. When the younger generation you've just seen have graduated from elite schools and hold positions of power in our institutions, our government, corporations, entertainment, news media, and so forth, how they might, in wielding the levers of society, be able to rationalize using their adult brain the hatred that was embedded in their minds during their adolescence. What we're seeing is just the beginning. To the white people who are watching, I just want to say, you are not an oppressor for refusing to accept an ideology that teaches people to hate you, that teaches you that you are inherently bad, that your children are inherently bad, that you are inherently racist no matter what you do or how you think, that you need to repent by taking affirmative steps in your life to redress harms that your ancestors may have done or the racist actions of other white people. In fact, you are not an oppressor, period. You did not choose to be born white, just like any of us did not choose to be born in, your, in our race. And to ask of you 
at the individual level, for example, to give your life in service of people of color, to be used as physical barriers at protests, to give away your house to black people instead of your children, all actual things that have been publicly demanded of white people, to ask this of you is morally reprehensible collective punishment. You are not under any obligation to carry yourself in any sort of way that others demand of you just because of the color of your skin. This, you need to do this and you need to do that because you benefit from privilege thing is bogus. It is just a way for people harboring racial animus to attack you, to say that the accomplishments you've achieved in your life isn't yours, and to silence you. It is not you. It is this ideology that is wrong and perverse. It is one cloaked in a shroud of pseudo-justice and self-righteousness, all the while excreting toxic fumes of racial hatred. It blames all white people for the actions of their ancestors, something you have no control over, That's while true. absolving black people of personal responsibility for their own individual actions by holding that black people commit acts of harm, for example, towards another community, that's the fault of white supremacy. White people are controlling them like puppets on a string. It's a backwards, transgressive ideology. If you don't harbor any hate in your heart but want to fight it as a matter of principle, this does not make you racist or bigoted. If you refuse to accept their premise in your head but are too afraid to voice your opinion, you are neither a coward nor a bad person. If you're of a liberal bent but there's a small corner in your brain telling you as you're watching this video that perhaps some of this is wrong, Listen to your intuition. Maybe you think, oh, I agree with most of what the progressive left teaches about racial justice, but just now with some of this disagreeable stuff only at the extremes, I'm here to tell you that the rot starts at the core. This racial hatred of white people is a natural outgrowth, part and parcel of an ideology that attempts to indoctrinate us into believing that there is current systemic oppression going on, that all racial disparities we see today is the sole result of oppression by white people, when there are other more plausible explanations to be had that these same people are silencing as impermissible hate speech. They're telling you, shut up, you'll take it, and you'll like it. But contrary to what they're saying, you don't have to take that. That's true. You can believe that the things that have been done in the past were morally wrong, as well you should, all the while believing that what is currently going on is also wrong, that we're going backwards, that this is history rhyming with itself, the table is turning in an eye for an eye manner. As the great Mahatma Gandhi once said, an eye for an eye will leave the whole world blind. But those driven by hatred would sooner gouge everyone's eyes out they realized that true victory for people of color would have been having history record that when the power dynamics shifted, we treated white people with a kindness that their forefathers may not have shown our forefathers. But now, it will say when we gained the power, we turned around and started doing some of the same stuff to white people. Segregation, social ostracization, hatred sanctioned by government and law. And we're doing all of this while pretending like we're doing something valiant. We've missed our bus, but that doesn't mean that there can't be a course correction. So, to some people of color watching who are engaging in this sort of hatred, whether or not you're acutely aware, the same people that act like white people as a collective are not people, but rather some pernicious alien force that has come to invade the earth. With this video, I implore you to ask yourself, what are we doing to white people? As some people love to say, do better. Guys, I, I love this. I love this so, so much. Like what he said at the end, and he said, do better. I don't care what they've done in the past like the, the painful thing is they are not the one who even did it you know it was their forefathers you see even when god told adam that your children children will you know rip on what you did it's a very bad way of punishing someone at least i commit the offense punish me but don't transfer the the punishment to my generation yes if i did the offense let me face the repercussion because even in the Bible, it says one man for itself. During Judgment Day, there will be no father, no mother. You will stand and give accounts to what you did with the life here on earth. So let the punishments be for the person that commit the punishment and not their descendants. Because it's really, really bad, you see. They are really taking a lot. Because when I, I went to Cape Coast Castle, you know, I, I saw, I, I went for um, a tourist visit and I saw a whole lot of white um people out there you know who were just looking at the castle looking at where they, they, they kept those slaves back then and how they were being treated i felt bad because you know they are um the same black folks with me i felt bad but i i also saw these guys looking at what their great grandfather or their ancestors did to the black folks and it wasn't like they were they were happy with what they did you know they, they felt bad because I could see it in their face. And another, another thing is, what made me angry was 
the people that accommodated them you may deal with these white folks that they can take your land keep slaves and do whatever they want to do on the condition that your um what is it called people will not be part of those slaves what makes you think that you are not part of the people killing those slaves because that condition you give them give them the ground to enslave other people you see because if you don't want something you don't create room for it so you give them the the the, the land you know to build their castle to enslave other people from other countries whereas you claim innocent that you have nothing to do with it you are part of it you know you're an accomplice that is it because me i i'm, I'm feeling bad i'm feeling I'm, I'm angry for those people too because assuming you did not agree to give them that land i don't think they will force you and take the land from you no because you will stand and fight and when they see that where they are keeping those slaves is not is not safe for them they won't even have the the the, the, the audacity to even build a castle today because you give them that room that okay you can do what you want with our land so long as we are not part of your slave it's it's really really like annoying but anyway I know the deed has been done, you know, they've, they've, they've captured slaves, they've extorted from us, they've used us for man labor and all. You see, I get the point and I feel it's in the past, like that is it, you know, said to err is human but to forgive is divine. So the more or the faster we learn to let go of what happened in the past, the better for all of us because, you see, an eye for an eye will make the world go blind based on what he said. If we keep on trying to, um, what is it called? If we keep on trying to pay back what they did to us, we'll end up, you know, destroying everything, you know, we've we've worked for all these years. You see, the way the world is right now is evolving and is evolving in a positive way because of what the world is being is creating. Everybody is trying to invent something, you know, create something, make sure the life is easy for everyone out there. When we decide to pay each other bad. Or pay each other back with um what we get from the or with what they did to us i don't think we will move this world we will just you know keep on moving in a circle but when we forgive and move on we'll be able to work together well i've i've, I've forgive everyone already i for, i don't i don't care if my great grandfather was part of the people sold out for slave i don't care if my uncles back then was were, were sold out what i know is it has happened and it's in the past and the people who committed those offense those atrocities are no longer here on earth let them pay their cross now their children 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 let's let them be guys let's just live in peace and harmony anyway let me know what you take in the comment section if this is your first time visiting my channel click on the subscribe button thanks for watching and remember this